Is me a diminished scale. <laughs> Welcome to today's vlog. I hope you're all good. Don't forget coffee with Dan mugs. They're going fast, really fast. So many people are asking for these. I'm going to have to do a reprint. So if you desperately want one, get one ordered today. The um, link is just below. I've also, don't forget, got CDs available. There is still, I think, a 20% off this CD if you check out the code that's at the bottom of uh, this description. Uh, my Jazz Vespers. Nice Christmas present. I'm going to talk more about Christmas music, Christmas CDs and things in an upcoming vlog. But today, I'm starting to feel a bit more Christmassy because students have already started recording their Christmas projects. If you don't know what my student Christmas projects are, check out the links below onto Cambridge Saxophone and you can see uh, what I ask my students. Basically, I get all my students, because I've got students all over the world. We all get together, we all practice and uh, rehearse and work on one piece and then we all record it all the way through, no matter what level we're at. We try and able to play two or three bars or sometimes the whole thing and then I piece it all together using, um, <laughs> not my things, this fantastic book, A Jazzy Christmas. Highly recommend this book, although I've just been teaching someone on Skype and we found out that about three or four of the pieces that are in my copy, which is about maybe seven, eight years old, are not in the new ones, maybe because of copyright. Anyway, I've just opened this. Hot off the press. Dan's vlog polo shirts. I think I've got to try it on, don't you? So here we go, three, two, one. There you go, I do like wearing my collars up, although these are pretty massive collars, aren't they? Well, there you go, Dan's vlog. I'll post a link below if you fancy getting some of those. You're gonna have to email me because I'll have to work out how many people want them. At the end of the day, I was thinking, I'm there getting YouTube merch and stuff like that, and I wanna get merch for my own channel. I wanna kind of, um, you know, you, you feel like you belong to the thing. I'm gonna put the collar down. You feel like, you, you know, you kind of, it belongs to part of um, the audience, the community and things like that. I have to head off and pick up the children from school now, but when I get back, I'm gonna to talk to you about the most important teaching tool. I find myself using it all the time and I use it a lot in practice. It's kind of one of the things, the few things I allow students to look at in their first few lessons, and that's the cycle of fifths. Although we call it the cycle of fifths, but we always tend to use it as a cycle of fourths. Somehow we've managed to get in a queue for the car wash in a village. by Johnny Mercer, stand that I haven't played in a long time. A long, long time, really, really beautiful tune. I wanted to talk today about the piece of paper I find myself referring to the most when I'm teaching. And it's this thing. It's called the Circle of Fifths. Most of you will know about it, but many of you may not understand how to practice with it. And the thing I'm always talking to students about, what I normally do, and I did it with a new student today, is I draw a line often across the middle, uh, from kind of like between, let me move that 10 around here, between A and E flat, 
and I just draw a line here and I go okay we start on A major and we work our way anti-clockwise because most music in the Western tradition moves in, an, it moves in fourths, not in fifths. Because basically A is the dominant chord or the dominant note of the D scale, D is the dominant of G, G is the dominant of C, C is the dominant of F, so on and so forth. And there is kind of no exercise on this that is too simple. You know, don't be arrogant with yourself and do yourself out of trying to get around this. Really spend some time just playing around, playing things around in fourths. It makes such a difference. Even if you just play kind of just the notes themselves, like. <laughs> Take the scales around that, try doing like um, uh, one, two, three, five, like giant steps, the magical thing. Nice little way of warming up. Oh, sorry, I shouldn't kick the stand there. I've had to move this tripod. I took it with me into London on Sunday, and of course, everything's now in the wrong place. It's taken ages to get the studio back to normal. But also, I mean, one great exercise I used to do with um, Tony Woods taught me this one is just playing bebop dominant scales around the circle of fifths going in fourths. Sorry, around the circle of fourths, anti-clockwise. So starting on A. <laughs> so on and so forth. It really is a great way to practice and it's one of the few sheets that I give out to people that I say, you know, oh, autofocus is going mad on this. It should rest on your music stand almost all the time. You know, you should use that circle of fifths and what I tend to do with students then is we tend to, after we're comfortable with those six scales, <clears throat> Excuse me. We rub out the line, and we kind of go down to E on the on the right hand side of the circle, and then we go down to A flat. And so you're covering four sharps to four flats. So you're going E A D G C F, B flat E flat A flat. And then basically within a year, most of my students are able to play in all twelve. Well, yeah, in all twelve keys, so they're able to play all twelve major scales. The beauty is, once you've learned all your, ma all your major scales, you've learned one of the minor scales because you just work off the relative minor, which is the one on the inside of the circle. So if you're used to reading this circle every day, you'll build up a picture in your mind. Another way to do it is to sort of put it to a, a clock face, you know, so imagine that kind of, you know, at 12 o'clock is C major and A minor. So you could basically play A minor by playing C major, so here's C major. Play the same scale but start on the A. There's A natural minor, A aeolian mode. Okay, but sharpen the seventh note of the A. You get the harmonic minor, okay? Sharpen the 6 and the 7, so add an F sharp in and a G sharp. You've got a melodic minor. You've covered all your bases just by changing that. And it makes such a difference to the way people can learn scales. So I don't give people scale books anymore. I just give them a circle of fifths, and all the answers are on there. You've just got to have the patience and the time to work in the practice room to go around that. And I still use it to this day. I mean, Back in that Coltrane documentary, they, they show you um, a hand drawing of Coltrane using equilateral triangles within the circle of fifths to work out different harmonic motions. There's a lot of maths involved in music, and there's probably endless amounts of other things that go on within the circle of fifths. So don't try and jump too far ahead too soon. If this is the first time you've ever approached the circle of fifths, then print one off stick it on your music stand, use it starting today. If you've been using the circle of fifths for a while, then you should be able to do things like working on diminished scales. You can pull a diminished scale off a circle of fifths by just working on the tritones. Tritones are exactly opposite each other. So if C major is sitting at 12 o'clock, F sharp is sitting at six o'clock. If I play eight flat seven, six, five, I've dealt with this in this uh, vlog episode, but just to recap here, um, eight flat seven, six, five and C, or C mixolydian descending, and then F sharp. And should see. Gives me a diminished scale. It's a great way. And if by knowing the circle of fifths, you can easily problem solve and move on to the next step and understand what's going on and then spend the time applying it. I hope that's useful for you. I'll link to that circle of fifths 
uh, below but there's loads of them knocking them out on YouTube anyway or Google anyway um, that's all we've got time for today um, I hope you found this vlog useful if you have please hit a like if you don't already please hit the subscribe button it makes such a difference to the quality of videos I can offer I was at YouTube space yesterday um, I picked up some nice new pens um, but I really you know I want to be able to unlock YouTube space properly and to do that I need to jump my subscribers forward I appreciate every single one of you as I said earlier on uh, in yesterday's vlog or the vlog before, we were just around about 1,000 subscribers this time last year. We're now approaching 4,000, which is amazing. It will be so awesome to get to 5,000 for the end of 2017. It would be really make my year. Um, don't forget, you can check out the nice little things. This is what I was up to in the vlog yesterday. This is what I was up to this time last year. Thank you very much for watching. I will see you very, very soon.